against uh, Operation Green Hand, launched by our own government and our fellow citizens. All of us know in the central and eastern parts of India, a war is going on, and this war is targeting the poorest people of our country. And we are all protesting against it. If we try to understand what is this operation Green Hand, why it is called Green Hand? In the 18th and 19th centuries in America, a similar hunt was conducted by the American and European rulers. The tribals, the Red Indians in America, were hunted and it was called a red hand. Similar hunts were conducted in Australia, New Zealand, and elsewhere. And the tribal continues to be a threat. And the tribal is good only if he is dead. This speaks for the, the nature of our rulers. And this also speaks for, for the nature of the system in which we live. Whether it's in America or today, in the contemporary India. The tribe is a simple thing. Like a Dalit. Like a Muslim. In this country. Because if you are a tribal, you are a potential Maoist or an Asali. If you are Muslim, you are a terrorist, a potential terrorist at least, or you are a terrorist already. And if you are a Dalit, you could be a potential Maoist or a terrorist. He's a friend of mine, I mean, before anything else, before our political engagement with things and all that. He's a friend of mine. I still have uh, several bottles of pickle that he made for me, which now I keep very carefully because I don't want them to finish before it comes out and makes me some more. Um, also, he did his uh, PhD on a number of books, including mine, including The God of Small Things. So we have that relationship as well. In fact, uh, my immediate uh, response is uh, an utter uh, shock. Uh, we never uh, expected, number one, he would get any punishment, but uh, much less a conviction for life. I mean, this is uh, just unbelievable. Because normally, you know, life sentence is given to those who directly participate in crime and there is an unflinching uh, evidence that one participated in the crime. The very fact that uh, Sai Baba is, uh, you know, suffer from 90% disability and he is uh, bound to a wheelchair, uh, that itself uh, makes him completely incapable of participating in any armed action. The reason that Sai Baba is in prison is because he was seen as one of the key campaigners against uh, Operation Green Hunt. It wasn't anything secret, it was a very public campaign. All of us were part of it and his crime was that it was reasonably successful and um, the government really was forced to sort of say there wasn't any such thing as Operation Green Hunt though now it continues and uh, and you know both inside the forest and outside anybody who stands up against these policies is called a Maoist and there he is inside and uh, you know, because there isn't, it's an operation without a name now. So it's very difficult for people to mobilize. Uh, the uh, press doesn't have much access to what's going on. And uh, so it's, it's a real, you know, in a way, putting him in has been 
to do with that. But the thing that I really want to say is that Sai Baba is not equal to other prisoners, you know, because he's a person with 90% disability. And just leaving him alone in a cell with his damaged wheelchair makes him a person who the state has a great advantage over. Without laying a finger on him, they are torturing him. Without laying a finger on him, they can kill him. After his conviction and he was put to, again sent to the same under prison again, and uh, where his right uh, is being violated, then we had actu actually approached the NHRC saying that these are issues there, these, these such issues are there before. This. We are saying we are not going to the matter of the trial, what happened is conviction, etc. But these are issues, his, his rights are being violated, his human rights are being violated, so NHRC should intervene. But according to me, your first demand should be that he should be allowed to be under house arrest. You see, you keep under her house arrest the worst of um, these criminals. Well, as far as uh, this entire issue of the arrest of uh, Mr. Sai, G. N. Sai Baba is concerned, whatever be the judicial process, etc., that let it take its course. But what we are saying is in purely humanitarian grounds. He is, number one, a disabled person. And we had uh, supported many of his struggles in Delhi University when he was being discriminated against. And in addition to that, he suffers from a series of uh, serious ailments which require immediate medical attention and a regular supply of medicines. And this has been not being, this is being denied actually. So his human rights and his rights as a prisoner, even prisoners of war are, are entitled to these uh, rights. The incarceration of uh, Professor J.L. Sai Baba uh, since March 2017 after he was convicted of offences under UAP is a classic example of the flaw in the law itself. See, unfortunately, uh, the trial court has convicted uh, Sai Baba, Professor Sai Baba, of being a member of the Maoist party, and which is a banned organization, and hence, under uh, UAPA, they have convicted him. Though he has not uh, been accused of or guilty of any kind of violent activity, etc., he is a wheelchair-bound person who has been teaching in a college in Delhi University. Now, of course, his appeal has been filed, that appeal will be heard in due course in India, these things take time. But meanwhile, he should be enlarged on bail, because his physical condition is very bad, his being in jail endangers his life and his health, etc., very seriously. There is no reason why such a person who is not involved in any violent activity, etc., who has merely been held guilty wrongly in my opinion of being a member of the Maoist organization, why he should not be given bail especially if he is wheelchair bound etc. One of the problems about uh, cases like Dr. Sai Baba's and his continuing incarceration is that uh, it is very difficult to keep sustained public interest going because this way that the state has of putting away people and uh, moving from one case to another means that sometimes, as in Sai's case, um, somebody is out of uh, public sight for years on end. There is no doubt that it is atrocious, it is not merely illegal. What kind of government this can be, which is afraid of, you are assuming that he has spoken or written, writing of a person who is confined to wheelchair for years together. Actually, Jain Sai Baba cannot be convicted for life. Jain Sai Baba cannot be kept in jail. If at all, he was helping naturalites intellectually, his house should have been watched, his activity should have been watched. There is no offence. If my ideology is I am helping and intellectually I am helping Nexalites or any other institution which is doing some justice to the poor, he cannot be prosecuted and he cannot be kept in jail. I am appalled and aghast at the treatment that India calls itself a civilized nation gives to a prisoner like Professor Sai Baba. 
इनका तबीयत तो ठीक नहीं बिल्कुल वहाँ अंडा सेल ही इतना रिप्रेशन है वो अंडा सेल में रिप्रेशन में और रिप्रेशन है पर्टिकुलरली टारगेट करके इनको ऊपर ये दमन चला रहे हैं इनका जो रेगुलर लाइफ सेविंग मेडिसिन है वो भी हमारे एडवोकेट्स टाइम टू टाइम दे रहे तो अंदर इनको पहुंचा नहीं रहे उसके बाद बन गया गरीबों को हटाओ अब गरीब लोग को आतंकवादी कह कह के जेल में भरे दिए जा रहे हैं और जब भी ऐसे मीटिंग हुआ करते थे पहले तो सबसे आगे और सारा जो ऑर्गेनाइज करने वाला था प्रोफेसर साई बाबा जो मेरा बहुत पुराना दोस्त है अब वो जेल में है और आप लोगों को सब मालूम है कि वो 90 परसेंट हैंडी कैप है उनको जेल में रखने रखना बिल्कुल ज़रूरी नहीं है लेकिन हम सबको डराने के लिए जेल में रखा है करो करो 